For today is about how to choose the right statistical test. Now, this will be the guide in choosing your statistical tools. In today's statistics, provides the basis for inference in the most medical research. Yet, for want of exposure to statistical theory and practice, it continues to be regarded as the a child's hell by all concerned in the loop of research and publication. The researchers or the authors, reviewers, editors, and readers. Most of us are, are familiar to some degree in descriptive statistical measures such as those of central tendency in those of dispersion. However, we falter at inferential statistics. This need not to be the case, particularly with the widespread availability of powerful and at the same time user-friendly statistical software. A few fundamental considerations will lead one to select the appropriate statistical test for hypothesis testing. However, it is important that the appropriate statistical analysis is decided before starting the study, at the stage of planning itself, and the sample size chosen is optimum. This cannot be decided arbitrarily, arbitrarily after the study is over and data have already been collected. The great majority of studies can be tackled through a basket of some 30 tests from over 100 that are in use. The test to be used depends upon the type of the research questions being asked. The other determining factors are the types of data being analyzed and the number of groups or data sets involved in the study. And I will give you a scheme based on the five generic research questions should help. Question number one, is there a difference between groups that are unfair? Groups or data sets are regarded as unfair if there is no possibility of the values in one data set being related to or being influenced by the values in the other data sets. Different tests are required for quantitative or numerical data and qualitative or categorical data as shown here in our figure. For numerical data, it is important to decide if they follow the parameters of the normal distribution curve or the Gaussian curve in which case parametric tests are applied. If distribution of the data is not normal or if one is not sure about the distribution, it is safe to use non-parametric test. Okay? So therefore, we need to identify if parametric or otherwise or non-parametric. When comparing more than two set of numerical data, a multiple group comparison test such as one-way analysis of variance or ANOVA or Kruskal-Wallis test should be used first. If they return as a statistical significant p-value or using meaning p uh, is less than 0 0.05, then only they should be followed by a post hoc test to determine between exactly which two data sets the difference lies. Repeatedly applying the t-test or its non-parametric counterpart, the man with knee u test. To a multiple group situation increases the possibility of incorrect or incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis. So the post hoc or the multiple group comparison test are to be applied in the event that ANOVA or its non-parametric counterpart shows a significant difference, of course, to detect between which two groups the significant difference lies. So, example of such tests are parametric data, Turkey's uh, an honestly significant difference test, Newman-Kills test, Bonferroni's test, Dani tests, 
chips test and others. For non-parametric data, we use Dunn's test. Now, for question number two, is there a difference between groups which are paired? Pairing signif signifies that data sets are derived by repeated measurement. This is the before-after measurement for or multiple measurement across time on the same set of subjects. So, pairing will also occur if subjects group are different but values in one group are in some way linked or related to values in the other group. Example, twin studies, sibling studies, parent of string studies. A crossover study design also calls for the application of paired group tests for comparing the effects of different intervention on the same subjects. Sometimes subjects are deliberately paired to match baseline characteristics such as age, sex, severity, or duration of disease. A scheme similar to uh, figure number one a while ago is followed in per data set testing. So, as outlined here in our figure two, once again, multiple data set comparison should be done through appropriate multiple group test followed by post hoc test. So, again, the post hoc or multiple group comparison test to be applied in the event that repeated measures ANOVA or its non-parametric counterpart shows a significant difference. So, parametric data, either Wilcoxon's match pair sign rank test or non-parametric data that is done test or done test. Now, number three. Is there any association between variables? The various tests applicable are outlined in figure 3 a while ago. Okay? In this figure 3, it should be noted that the test meant for numerical data are for testing the association between two variables. There are a correlation tests and they express the strength of the association as a correlation coefficient. An inverse correlation between two variables is defected by a minus sign. We need to take note that all correlation coefficients vary in magnitude from 0 or no correlation at all to 1 or the perfect correlation. A perfect correlation may indicate but, that, but does not necessarily mean casualty. When two numerical va variables are linearly Related to each other, a linear regression analysis can generate a mathematical equation which can predict the dependent variable based on a given value of the independent variable. Odds ratios and relative risk are the staple of epidemiologic studies and express the association between categorical data that can be summarized as 2 by 2 contingency table. Logistic Regression is actually a multivariate analysis method that expresses the strength of the association between a binary dependent variable and two or more independent variable as adjusted odds ratios. So as what we have here for both uh, variables parametric, we use person's R. Otherwise, is per month's or Kendall's correlations. For the 2 by 2 data, relative risk, then otherwise chi-square test for trend, logistic regression. Is there agreement between data sets? This can be a comparison between a new screening technique against the standard test. New diagnostic test against the available gold standard or agreement between the ratings or scores given by the different observers. As shown here in figure uh, 4, agreement between numerical variables may be expressed quantitatively by the in intraclass correlation coefficient or graphically by constructing a bland Altam plot 
in which the difference between two variables x and y is plotted against the mean of x and y. In case of categorical data, the Cohen's kappa statistics is frequently used with kappa, which varies from 0 for or, for or agreement at all to 1 for perfect agreement, indicating strong agreement when it is greater than 0.7. It is inappropriate no, to infer agreement by showing that there is no statistically significant difference between means by calculating a correlation coefficient. So for numerical data, we use intra-class correlation coefficient or the quantitative method or the bland altman plot or the graphical method. For the categorical data, Cohen's kappa statistics. Is there a difference between time to event trends or survival plots? This question is specific to survival analysis. Or the endpoint for such analysis could be death or any event that can occur after a period of time, which is characterized by censoring of data, meaning that a sizable proportion of the original study subjects may not reach the endpoint in questions by the time the study ends. Data sets for survival trends are always considered to be non-parametric. Again, data sets for survival trends are always considered to be non-parametric. If there are two groups, then the applicable tests are Cox-Mantel test, Gehans or Generalized Wilcoxon test, or Lagrack test, Lagrank test. In case of more than two groups, PETO and PETO's test or lag rank test can be applied to look for significant difference between time to event trends. It can be appreciated from the above outline that distinguishing between parametric and non-parametric data is important. Test of normality like Kolmogorov Smirnov test or Shapiro Well Goodness of Fit test may be applied rather than making assumption. Some of the other prerequisite of parametric tests are that sample have the same variance. It's drawn from the same population. Observations within a group are, are independent and in that the sample have been drawn randomly from the populations. A one-tailed test calculates the possibility of deviation from the null hypothesis in a specific direction. Whereas a two-tailed test calculates the possibility of deviation from the null hypothesis in either or either direction. When intervention A is compared with intervention B in the clinical trail, the null hypothesis assumes there is no difference between the two interventions. Deviation from this hypothesis can occur in favor of either intervention in a two-tailed test but in one-tailed test it is presumed that only one intervention can show superiority over the other. Although for a given data set, a one-tailed test will return a smaller p value than a two-tailed test. The latter is usually preferred unless there is a watertight case for one-tailed testing. It is obvious that we cannot refer to all statistical tests in one editorial so, or discussion. However, the schemes outlined will cover the hypothesis testing demands of the majority of observ observational as well as interventional studies. So there is no substitute to actually working hands-on with dummy or real data sets and to seek the advice of a st statistician in order to learn the nuances of statistical hypothesis testing. Thank you, and I hope that okay, this will be the references for this discussion, and of course, the ncbi.nlm.inih.gov. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I hope that it helps you on how we'll be able to decide on how to choose the right statistical test specifically for the numerical data and categorical data. We need also to consider if it is parametric or non-parametrics, two groups or greater than two groups, of course. And uh, at the same time, uh, applying the two groups repeated measures like ANOVA and two groups Pridemans ANOVA and others. Okay, thank you.